Hello everyone, greetings for the day and welcome to our learning journey. This is Divya and you are watching Trendbrain. I'm so excited and thrilled to welcome each one of you to our one of the special teacher training session focused on effective methods of reading for children. Your dedication to enhancing education through our YouTube channel is truly commendable. I'm excited to embark on this learning journey together with all of you. So today, let's get started with this innovative approach. I'm going to share some of the insights and help you to discover the practical techniques that will make your learning experience a joyous and enriching adventure for your young learners. So let's get started. As we all know, reading with preschoolers is a wonderful way to promote language development, cognitive skills, and a love for books. Here are some of the methods and tips that is helping our children to work on reading. There are four methods that we predominantly use in our preschools. Likewise, as I mentioned, there are many other methods as well. In case if you know any other methods, you can put in the comment section below. What we use in the preschool and what I would practice with my students is on this four methods. So the first one is the phonetic methods. Second is the look and say method, or we also call it as flashcard method or whole word approach. The third is the language experience method. And the fourth one is the context support method. We can use any of these methods to introduce reading. Let's see one by one how different is each method accordingly. In today's session, I'm only going to talk about phonics method and the other three methods, we will see it in the other classes. So let's begin with what is phonics methods and how is it so different? What is phonics? Phonics is a method of teaching, reading that focuses on the relationship between the letters and their corresponding sums. For example, when I take any letter, I can consider the letter as the graphical representation. How does that letter look like? What does a symbol look like? So we call them as graphemes. Every letter is associated with a sound. That sound is called a phoneme. Okay. And when we have the relation between the letter and the sound, that is what the phonics is focusing on. Okay. It focuses on the relationship between the letter and its sounds. Or I could put it in another word, the relationship between graphemes and phonemes. Clear? So let me put it into the pictorial representation. Say, for example, the goal of the phonics is like when I have to work with children, what is my goal? I have to help the children to develop the ability to decode the words. So every word we know, it is made up of multiple sounds. So the child should have the ability to break that words or decode that words. In the process of decoding that words, they have to recognize the individual sounds in that word, right? That is important when they are learning to read and spell. To keep it a little bit more simple, say the diagram. Now, I have taken the word spoon. When I have to work on the spellings of spoon, the spelling is S-P-O-O-N. Correct? But when I break it or when I decode it in the phonetic language, there are multiple sounds in it. How many sounds? S Ooh, mm. So I have four sounds, correct? So every time that I'm saying a sound, s, there is a sound that gets generated. That's my phony. S, p, ooh, mm. Can you see the sound waves? So all those sounds are nothing but my phonemes. So every grapheme, that is the graphical representation of that sound is associated with a phoneme, correct? So every grapheme is again got a letter that we have to further decode it and learn about it. So once we understand the sound symbol correspondence, that becomes easy. So as teachers and parents, this should be our goal. Give any word, the child should be able to break the word into multiple phonemes, okay? That will help me to read better. When I have to write, I have to blend all the 
sounds together and I start writing. So it's all about how we decode, how we encode, finding out how many phonemes are there in every word. This has to be our goal. So let's take it a little bit more further and make it a little more easier. So how do we break this entire method? The first step that we're going to be working is on the letter sound correspondence. The second thing we work is on blending. The third, we work on segmenting. Fourth, we work on word families. And fifth, we work on the different rules of our phonics. Now, what is a letter sound correspondence? Let's begin with this. So, for example, if you take any letter, be it uppercase letter or a lowercase letter, we would not be focusing on that. Take any letter. So, your phonics will begin by teaching your child the sound that is associated with the letter or the group of letters. Why do I say group of letters? We will see that later when we work with our phonic rules. So when we have a vowel and a vowel together, so we are grouping multiple letters together and they make one sound. So that becomes my diphthong. When I take a consonant and a consonant, when I group them together, they make one sound. That's my consonant blend. So we are not working on diphthongs and digraphs or blends, consonant blends. We're not working on that. Let's now only concentrate on the individual letters and their corresponding letter. Now, say if I take the letter A and I take a picture or an object which is associated with that. Now, see A for apple. What's the beginning sound of that object? Apple, A. Ah. Ah, right? So, ah becomes the sound of the letter A. So, that is how I would represent. So, I put a slash and I represent the sound of it. Again, there are differences, whether it is a short vowel sound or a long vowel sound. Now, this is a short vowel sound that we would work. So, when children are too young, it's always better that we begin with the short vowel sounds. Later, once they master the 26 letter sounds, you can introduce that vowels have a short vowel, a long vowel sounds. Okay, so A is an apple. So this is how you would first begin. So a letter and the letter sound. So once they have learned the letter sound correspondence, we teach children how to blend. Okay, so now they are familiar with the sounds of individual letters. Now you would do that. This previous step you will do for all the letters. A as in apple, B as in ball, C as in cat. So B sounds B, C, K, D, D, E, F, F, G, G, H, H, I, E, J, J, K, K, L, L, M, M, N, N, O, O, P, P, Q, Q, R, R, R S, S, T, T, U, A, V, V, W, W, X, X, Y, Y, Z, S. So now we saw the letter to the sound correspondence. What's my second step? Once my children are familiar with the sounds of all those individual letters, now it's time to teach them to blend multiple letter sounds together. When we are blending the multiple sounds together, we are making words, right? Now, say, for example, I've taken the picture of cat. How many letters are there? Three letters, C, A, T, correct? So what's the, what are the sounds? Cat, K, A, T. That makes up the word cat. Let's see how do we blend. So you take the picture, you put on to the individual letters, you put a red dot underneath. Let the child point to every letter. So if the child is pointing to every letter, to make it even more visually good, I have marked the red dots. So touch the red dot under every letter as you see each sound. So let's do that. Let's do it one more time. Cat. Some teachers or some parents read it also as K -a -t. So try avoiding the analytical way. Try to synthesize the letter sounds to keep it a little bit more precise. So this is your blending. Okay, so you're teaching blending to children. 
you're teaching blending okay individual sounds in a particular word you're teaching them now slowly you see now you again once they're confident on that try to blend the first two sounds together go a little slower put your finger on the first two letters go a little faster it's a cat okay so now did you see you blended the first two letters together and then you added the third sound cat 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 so you blend the two and then added the next one now the third stage you say all the three sounds together cat cat that's how you go so try with more words go with individual sounds try to blend two and then say all the three sounds together you can always begin with three letter words now we taught the children how to blend now it's also helping me to work on segmenting what is segmenting segmenting is nothing but breaking i give a complete word and the child will have to break it now when i say cat the child will have to break it into three sounds k at so they understand that there are multiple sounds in a word let's do it for another one if i give car r two sounds that's segmenting when i give fan f a n three sounds so three syllables so those individual phonemes are nothing but three syllables we also call this as a process of syllabification okay so this is all two words in segmenting now see if i give you a word spell s p e l l l is a double consonant right so that's so we're going to be putting that into one sound so how many syllables four so there are four individual phonemes phonemes is nothing but individual sounds so all our phonics instructions they are closely tied to the phonetic awareness or the phonemic awareness which is nothing but the ability to identify and manipulate the individual sounds and as i said those individual sounds are nothing but our phonemes which is there in the word the more you give activities like find out the rhyming word what what rhymes with spell bell smell tell right so you can always work on that so when the children are learning to identify the rhyming words it becomes easy which helps them to work on segmenting a little better teach them blending techniques teach them segmenting techniques so that is going to help them to work more on phonetic awareness the last one or the fourth one could be on the word families now let's introduce now we were working with some of the uh, vowel and a consonant together so we started working on the word families now say for instance if i have started to, uh, to introduce at so i have taught them to blend a and t makes at now you have to make a family word so what all could be the family words it could be cat bat mat hat rat fat right so these are all the words that come along with the same family they have some similar pattern they have the same pronunciation except the beginning letter sounds so what can we do we can start with activities like you know give them a picture give the word let the child identify the picture and, and read okay so initially most of the children might not be able to read the letters so what do we do we can actually put those three dots as we did initially okay so they can go in individually like b a t bat k a cat but if there are no dots and if the teacher has given it this way the child will have to read it as bat cat fat hat it should never be read like at uh, fat her uh, at uh, hat because we have not given the space neither we have put the dots underneath so this is something that we as teachers and parents needs to give as a code to our children when there are no dots when there are no spaces read the word as a whole word so by that means the child would have already mastered the technique to blend the different sounds to form the word right so what makes it more easier is when we give pictures like this it becomes easy for a child to identify now simultaneously you can also work on what's the beginning sound what's the ending sound what's the middle sound now say for example if i show them the picture of cat and i can ask them listen carefully cat what's the beginning sound of it fat beginning sound what's the beginning sound of hat 
right so you can stress on the beginning the ending and the middle stance this would also reinforce and the child would be able to work very well with all the different kinds of sounds now as a reading and a reading structure you list down all the words of the ad family you can ask the children to finger you know point the finger on every word or you can give them a pencil so that they would not miss out on any of the word to make it more easier go alphabetical like you know b then c okay so bat cat fat hat mat bat rat sat vat the confidence so you go to your consonant blends they have to read again brat chat flat splat that if they have difficulty in reading brat you can teach them to break it to segment it or syllabicate it br at it's not like buru at ch h a at no it you have to teach them that it's a consonant blend br at brat ch at chat fl at flat spl at splat okay so that's how you would work on helping the children to work on it so this is a word family chart which you can actually put it you can take it as a print out let your child go through has many number of uh, words that they have learned okay so if your child has got any difficulty in learning any of the sound don't mind because we still are working with the same letters over and again isn't it so we might encounter with the same sound again in a different word family so that is where our children are getting reinforced to learn the same letter sound so not to worry go slow be patient your child is going to learn in an amazing way okay so trust me on that so don't worry if the child is not able to pick up today they would for sure learn it maybe in a week or little later but consistency is the key today you do at family tomorrow you pick up an family day after you can do an ad family then you can do ag family in a week see there are so many words that you have started to teach and there could be repetition of the same letter sounds and the child might pick up so easily isn't it so this is how you work with word families okay now we have done this to as a teacher what we need to always be working whether the child has done the picture to the word correspondence so always to make sure whether your child has learnt it because we always work on the three period lesson plan right so you give and you check whether the child has learnt it or not so match the following is a very good way to check whether my child has mastered this or not so you can have similar word word labels and you can have pictures ask the child to match the correct word to the correct picture this is one activity that all of us do it and most of your phonic books also might have it isn't it if you don't have please include that in your activity list okay so writing is also essential so maybe you can start with giving them dotted lines and they can write but uh, if your child is around 4 and a half years or 5 years they should definitely master to write on four line writing or double line writing or a three line writing irrespective of what your schools do follow please encourage your child to write the print fonts is good enough always try to work with the lower case letters because that is what we use in our regular reading and writing practices okay so writing is more important and coming down to the tool of writing pencils more preferably for the younger children and in case if they are not getting attracted to write with pencil probably you can work with sketch pens or even markers you can give them and slowly have a transition from the pens to pencil for the younger children okay so let them write oh, uh, and this is one of the other activity that you can always do as a reinforcement or a revision activity give them a number of words let the child read out aloud and find out what is the correct word to the correct picture if they find something let them color the box or circle the box okay as an activity that you can actually work and more importantly we should never forget about introducing reading about the same word family to our children because this is where we would also include the high frequency words or the sight words right which we often use it in our other stories also now if in in this sentence the fat rat sat on the mat 
What are the family words? Fat, rat, sat, mat. These are the family words, which was of 80. But what are the other words which came new? That was the, on, again the. So that means the was repeating here in this. So maybe in my other story also the can come. On is a positional word wherein I can teach children about grammar here. So on the mat, okay, or under the mat. I can change the positional words. The fat, rat, sat, on the mat. The other sentence I can say, the fat, rat, sat, under the mat. The fat, rat, sat, next to the mat. The fat, rat, sat, beside the mat. Right? So, you can change the positional words. Now, thereby, we are introducing new vocabulary to our children, new sight words, new high-frequency words that we are teaching to our children, which can be introduced not by phonic method, but by the second method that we are going to be using, and that's our look and see method. People also call this as sight words. People also call this as flashcard methodology or photographic memory or the whole word approach, okay? So that's the second method. We will see it in our next class. Now, follow by the same thing. Now, why do you think that I have given dots under every word? So that our children don't skip any word. So if the child is a beginner in reading, this is more important. So parents, please remember under every word, put a dot. Or you instruct your child to point out to every word as they read. The fat rat sat on the mat. One common mistake they do is like when they are towards this reading phase, they, they try to work on syllabicating. So if they're working on syllabicating, they have to read it in their mind. Okay. So let them not put out the sounds like, you know, the fur at a fat, the fur at a fat, r at a rat, s at a sat. No. That's analytical way of pronouncing and it's the wrong way of reading. So we have to read the word together because there is no spaces or I have not given three dots under every word. So this is something that you have to train your children. If it is one word, they have to read it together. So let them do that blending in their mind. Fat, rat, sat, on the mat. Speed reading, okay? Practice speed reading. The fat rat sat on the mat. The more you focus on reading, the children would become really fluent in reading. So you put multiple sentences together. Let them read a paragraph. That's how you're going to be introducing reading. And reading is going to be very, very easy if you follow all the steps, okay? So see, any time that we work with word families, it's a little easy for our children. And this is encouragable for children who are like around like five years of age to help them to work with reading with the family words. It becomes a little tricky when we start introducing more patterns, more phonetic rules, when there are words which might have silent letters, when we have two letters, that is when we have two vowels being together, when they make up one particular sound, when we have digraphs included, when we have, uh, sorry, when we have two vowels together, that is diphthongs, it has been included, which becomes as a little tricky for our children to understand, or digraphs, right, when two consonants are blending together. So these could all be slightly challenging for our children to read but when you take it stage by stage it becomes more easier so to begin with begin with the simple three letter words cvc what is cvc a consonant a vowel and a consonant word word families work with shorter sentences and then work with the paragraphs okay so that's how you would begin with this particular method then slowly we will get on to the phonetic rules, okay? In phonic rules, we have to understand all the phonic rules because only then the spellings makes a lot of sense. So we will help the children to do better when it comes down to reading unfamiliar words, right? So wherein they cannot decode it really easy because we all understand that English language is really complex it has a lot of rules. 
So when we start exposing our children to varieties of words, that is when the children come back to us, ask a lot of questions. They say, ma'am, C-U-T is cut. P-U-T should be put, right? Why do we say put? Okay, so these are kind of questions that they come down to with a lot of expectations from you as a teacher to answer, right? So in the further classes, we are going to be helping all our students to understand the phonetic rules much better so that they are exposed to varieties of words and they get good answers for all their questions. So as I mentioned, consistency is the key Practicing every day is very, very essential if your child is struggling in reading and writing. So keep up your continuous space because as I mentioned, it's very essential for all of us to work with our children when it comes down to reading and writing. So what could be the rules that we start with? So we will begin with the silent E rule, a consonant digraph rule. We understand where uh, the vowel digraph rules, the consonant blend rules, the vowel teams and the rules that they have to follow, the soft and the hard C and G rule, open and close syllable rule, Y as a vowel rule. So far, we have only understood or learnt about that there are five vowels. And the last phonetic rule we will also see what are the situations wherein Y would act as a vowel and what is that rule all about? Each rule, we would see it as a separate lesson in a separate segment, okay? So this is the first part of one of the four methods, right? So what was one of the four methods, right? So we had phonetic method, look and say method, language experience method and the context support method. So what we have covered in today's lesson is the first method, that's phonics method. This part is going to be in a separate lesson when we do our phonetic training, a five-day masterclass, wherein we would work with 44 phonetic sounds. Along with that, we would cover all the phonic rules and the alternative spellings. If you're interested to learn a little bit more on phonics, the rules and how to go about in making sure your children are really good enough in learning so quickly and easily, then you should join our certification programs. We have a five-day masterclass which helps our children to work on making phonics really easy. Okay, and you can master that skill too if you're an emergent teacher or if you are a skillful mother or a parent who is looking to work with your children to work on their phonetic skills, this course is going to be really helping you. In case if you're looking for the admissions in any of our centers for your child to join in our free school, we have our admissions open for the next forthcoming academic session, 2024 and 25. The application forms are being issued from December 16th onwards on all our centers in Munikulala, Dodinekundi and in Manita Tech Park in our Bangalore centers. You can visit in our school office, collect the physical applications and you have to fill out and there would be an interaction followed by that. So that's it for today and I hope this lesson was really helpful for all of you. As I mentioned, if at all, if you would like to take up any of the certification courses, do join us. Apart from this certification course, we also give admissions wherein you can become a certified Montessori teacher and start your career as a Montessori trained professional. That's for today and I wish you all a wonderful evening. God bless. Take care. Happy learning. Thank you.